Hi, kids. How you doing? <clears throat> um, as we start out our first uh, study of the World War I units, uh, kind of as, as we take a look at it, uh, you know, we got to ask ourselves, well, why, why are we studying World War I? Um, it is a, uh, a war that was fought a long time ago. There's nobody who is currently alive who, uh, who fought in it or really even remembers it anymore. Um, even the people who are very, very old, over 100 years old, they were so young, they don't really remember the war. Um, but it is important because it's really the beginning of the modern world, the world that you and I have grown up in and, and the idea of a lot of the things that we have come to know and just sort of accept uh, got their start during World War I. For instance, uh, the idea of the United States being the most powerful nation in the world. Uh, that was not a, an established thing until after World War I was over. You know, going into World War I, countries such as Britain, uh, France, Germany, throw Russia in there. Those were the countries that were considered to be the major powers in the world. And uh, uh, the United States was in that conversation, but had never really proven it. And World War I was when it became obvious that that's, that's what it was. So as we, uh, uh, as we take a look at, at it, that's kind of what we're going to, what we're going to look at. We're going to, we're going to view what are the big ideas over the next month as we're as we're learning about World War One? What are the things that we're going to learn about? Okay, now the first thing that we're going to do, and when you do your first set of FBI notes, this is really what we're what we're going to be focusing on is the idea of um, Europe divided. Okay, that's the the first uh, article that that we're going to be reading. Uh, the FBI notes that we're doing is all about. What did Europe look like in uh, 1914 when the when the war started? Okay, now uh, in a lot of ways it doesn't look too much different from uh, from what it looks like now, especially this part of uh, of Europe, that western part of Europe looks very similar. It's little changes here and there, but very similar to what it once uh, looked like a hundred some years ago. Now this part of Europe looks very different now. And it, the reason it looks different is because of World War I, okay? Places like the Austria-Hungary Empire, okay? Doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't exist because of World War I. There is an Austria, there's a Hungary, but there's also Czech Republic, a Slovakia, uh, a Bosnia, a Slovenia. Uh, you've got all sorts of uh, countries that... Uh, didn't used to exist that exists now, you know, Poland in this part of, of Europe, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, notice there's no Finland up here. Um, so you, you see that, you know, we'll also read about these uh, alliances that the, uh, that the countries were, were all, all a part of. Okay. Now the, the next big idea is why do countries go to war? Well, in this case, they went to war somewhat foolishly, um, they were looking for uh, empires. They were looking to add to the empires that they already had, or in the case of the Germans, they were looking to create an empire that was as big as some of the other empires that were that were out there. And that's really all they cared about. Now, you see, you know, this is a, a family tree, right? These are all of your various uh uh, kings and queens throughout the 17 and 1800s. And that gets us to this guy right here, okay, Kaiser Wilhelm II. He was the German king, okay? And then you get King George V of England right here. And then you get a guy who looks almost exactly like him, Tsar Nicholas II, who was the king of Russia. Notice these two guys right there, they almost look exactly the same. Um, why? They were cousins. All these guys were cousins. They were, uh, they were related, and yet they went to war with each other in the most devastating war the world had ever seen to that point. Uh, why? Because 
they were looking for a fight. They thought it would be easy and they thought it would be something that would give them glory. And instead, it pretty much destroyed all of their countries, some more than others. You know, this guy ended up, the Tsar of Russia, ended up being executed with his entire family during a uh, during a revolution that happened because of the war. King George, he lived out his days and, and Britain ended up doing okay, but it was never as strong after World War One as it was before. They would have been better off not going to war. Kaiser Wilhelm lost his throne by the end. And this led to the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Hitler's not really a part of any of this uh, starting out. So I just talked about uh, King George and the uh, and the Tsar of, of Russia. Um, <clears throat> you know, you end up with uh, another big idea that we're going to have is eventually, you know, one of the things that you're going to learn about World War I is just what a horrible, horrific waste it was. Millions of people died for four years and nothing got solved. People died for nothing. Um, they went off to war. They were excited. They thought it was going to be an adventure. They wanted to win medals. They wanted glory, all this kind of garbage that uh, gets sold to people when it comes time for war. And you know what? You're going to reach a point where when we're learning about this, where you are going to go, why did people keep accepting this? Why did they keep doing this? Um, well, there's reasons for, for that. Um, but you know what? They reach a point. They reach a point where they're not going to do that anymore. Okay. So as we look at it now, why did people do it? Because they thought it was their, their duty. They wanted to show that they had honor. They believed that uh, it was what they were supposed to do. Um, and that was enough for, for a long time. You know, uh, people did what they, they thought was, was right for a long time. But that only works for so long. Um, eventually, people reach a point where they're just not going to do it anymore. And then that's where we reach this idea of revolution. When I talk about how uh, the world, the modern world started, Russia had a revolution that changed the world forever. Uh, we still talk about Russia uh, as a, uh, if not a total enemy, uh, definitely a country that we distrust. Uh, and that traces its roots back to World War I. Um, you know, we'll learn about the, the Russian Revolution and kind of uh, that sets the stage for uh, just about everything in American foreign policy for the next hundred years. Uh, it's, uh, it's still with us even today. Now, uh, as, we, as we continue, you know, it's, it's easy to say this is an old war. It's a war that doesn't matter anymore because it did happen a long time ago, no doubt about that. But it's important to remember this idea of nothing has ever been the same the entire time uh, since this war was over. Um, you know, you see guys here in, in, the, uh, in the trenches, these are German soldiers, um, they wearing the gas masks because poison gas was, was used for the very first time by everybody in World War I. Uh, one of the very few weapons that man has come up with that they used and then decided not to use anymore because it was so horrible. Uh, machine guns were used really for the first time in World War I, which led to, as you can see, all these graves, just this horrific death toll. Uh, that didn't used to exist because in the old days, uh, you'd fire a rifle and then it would take you 15 to 20 seconds if you were really good to reload and shoot another bullet. Well, now you see we've got six guys, these six who are running this one machine gun, and really it's only these three guys that are doing that, uh, they are capable of killing hundreds of men in a few minutes. Uh, that's something that is... Uh, something that has not changed. Uh, we, we see it. The, the weapons of war uh, became horrific in the amount of damage that they could, that they could do to people. Uh, and people didn't understand that going into the war. Well, they sure understood it after four years. And that's why things changed and they have never changed, changed back 
Nobody's ever forgotten it. Um, now, you saw at the beginning, uh, this war was entitled the war to end all wars. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't that. But people were sure while the war was going on that no one will ever be this stupid again to uh, to try and do this this kind of thing. So, yeah, people called it the war to end all wars. And who knew in 20 years we'd be in an even bigger war. Um, but uh, that's because nothing got solved. Uh, just as I, as I said before, lots of people died, nothing got solved. And that's kind of where we, uh, where we ended up. So that's kind of where our, uh, uh, study is going to take us. We're going to learn starting about Europe divided. Uh, and then we're going to, we're going to go from there. We're going to kind of finish up in this idea of uh, revolution and, and nothing ever being the same after, after that. So that's what we've got. And, uh, I, I hope that you enjoy, uh, our learning about it. And it's certainly something that we should all use as a cautionary tale. No doubt about that. So, uh, we're going to get after it. Okay. Take it easy.